Okay, so today we're going to take a look at how we can maybe use smart groups and custom fields to help us more easily assign content. Uh, what I've built out here is kind of a, a fictitious structure, but a structure that may look familiar to a lot of you, where I've got kind of a district uh, example here. And this one's pretty simple that there's only one high school, one junior high, and one elementary. Uh, but within those, I've got kind of this tree structure, very typical kind of thing for those who've run FileWave for a while where I've got just normal groups and I've really got it split out into three parts, which is staff, students normal, and student lockdown. Now that doesn't mean the students are not normal. What it means is that they're getting a normal restriction profile and the lockdown is a lockdown restriction profile. Uh, what's wrong with this structure? Nothing whatsoever, right? I've got my faucets over here, staff normal, student lockdown, student normal profiles, and I can assign them then to these groups. And I have done already. So if we look at the associations here against staff, you'll see that that profile is assigned. Now, what's wrong with the structure? Again, nothing, except that uh, there may be a little bit more efficient way of doing a couple of things here. And so I wanna show you a different way of doing this with smart groups and custom fields. The primary drawbacks of doing it in this way with this structure is it can become a little bit confusing uh, about where a student sits, right? I might have other content assigned here. And if I were to then move the device, right? If I move it over here to lockdown, I can do that. Uh, but then if I do that, I now have to update the model, which is, of course, takes a little bit and it's intrusive to every other admin out there. So my goal is I'd really like my techs in the field to be able to do these kind of moves on their own. But I don't want to give them the ability to update the model because I don't want to see model updating all the time. And I'm a little worried about what other changes they might make. So is there another way I can do the same thing, which is to control restriction profiles as they go to devices? And yes, we can and possibly a little more simply. So rather than doing this kind of tree, right, I might do something like this. I might even keep it here in the district section. I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to call it just restrictions. Okay. All right. The goal is within here, I'm going to have three groups, but not manual groups, smart groups, one for student normal, one for student lockdown, one for staff normal, right? But what am I going to drive? How am I going to drive those smart groups? Which devices go into which smart groups? Well, that's what we're going to do now is I'm going to go into assistance and go into custom fields. Right now, I don't have any. Right? So I'm probably going to want two. Right? Why do I want two? Well, I probably want two for a couple of reasons. Because one, I'm breaking out uh, by student or staff. Right, so generally, I'm probably going to want a custom field for student or staff. And two, I want a, a restriction kind of field where I can say, hey, this is a lockdown, this is student normal, this is staff normal. Right, so I want to at least, and I'll probably add a third here just for good measure to show you installing individual software. All right, so I'm going to click the plus here, create a new custom field, and I'm going to call this restriction. All right, and the beauty of this is that this can then be built up over time. So right now we have three, maybe later I'll have more than three types of restrictions. Right? Uh, so I'm going to say that this one is called restriction. It's by administrator, meaning it's a field in the database that I'm just going to set in the admin and I'm going to assign it to all devices, which means all devices can have this field populated. What data type is it? It is going to be a string. It's going to be a list of things, but I'm not going to allow people to type in whatever they want. I'm going to say that this is a list of restricted values. And then in here, I'm going to put three things because this is our restriction. We're going to add that it's staff. We're going to add that it's student, or we're going to say that it's lockdown and spell it correctly. There we go. Okay, so we've got those three options. Now, you see the staff is highlighted, that or the, is bold. That means it's the default value, but we don't want it to be the default value. We probably want student to be the default value because that's our normal, kind of normal condition for a device. And we would only want it in staff or lockdown if we manually set it that way. So we're gonna make student the default by clicking toggle default here. And that will make it so that every device in our environment right now will be set to the student restriction and any new device that gets enrolled tomorrow, the next day, or the next year will be set to student by default, right? So the most restrictive is going to win for us there. Well, technically lockdown is more restrictive, but that's an edge case, okay? We're going to create, while we're in here, two additional fields just for example purposes, right? So we're going to call 
uh, let's say user role is one of them. We're going to say again administrator assigned to all devices. Again, it's a string. This time we're going to set the values to student and staff alone. Right? And we can use that for many other things. This time student is good as the default uh, because staff would obviously have more ability to do different things. So student would be our normal. Okay, So that one's good. We'll do one more as an example. And we'll just call it something like install Adobe Photoshop. This one's a little different. We'll still assign it to all devices, but rather than a string, we'll say this one's Boolean, which is just a true false. Right? And we are going to set a default value here of false. Right? So this will just be a checkbox. And you'll see how we can use each one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So that's going to set those values for all these devices. Okay, so let's build our smart groups. So here in restrictions, I'm going to have three groups because I've got three types of restrictions. I can say student normal. I can say then student lockdown. I'm consistent in misspelling that. Student lockdown. And then lastly, I'm going to add staff. Right. And right now, I think that name is okay. Obviously, the names have to be unique. Uh, so I've created the smart groups, but I don't have any criteria on them. What are my criteria going to be? exactly what I said in the restriction section before in the field that I just created. So I'm just going to edit the smart group. I'm going to base it off an inventory query. It's going to be based off the custom field that I just created here in custom fields restriction. And I'm going to say which one are we looking at? Student normal. So I'm going to set it to student and save that. And OK. And nothing's going to be in there. Student lockdown, same thing, where I'm going to edit that and set an inventory query. Uh, in this time for restriction and lockdown. All right, and then lastly on staff, the same exact thing. Inventory query. And you may say, wow, that's redundant. I wish I could duplicate these things. And I wish that too. And we're working on that. We'll have that before too long. So last one, restriction. And this one is for staff. So I'm going to say that. Okay. So I've got those three smart groups. What's different about this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and create my associations for staff to go over to staff and for lockdown to go to the lockdown smart group pardon my four-legged co-worker here and her snores in the background uh, and then lastly we're going to create our student normal and assign it to student normal. All right, so that is associated to all those different uh, restrictions. So if we go here, we'll see them in there. And we've actually got student normal, something populated in that smart group. Why? Well, it populated because we set it to be the default. So when we went into restriction, we said that student was the default. So when we look at an individual machine, right? All of them, in fact, have student set as the uh, as that custom field. So what's different about doing this with the smart group is if we went ahead and updated the model, right? I'm not going to do it at this point, but if we updated the model, uh, what we would know then is that those profiles are assigned to these smart groups, okay? What's different about this than the manual groups is that those profiles are now assigned to anything that's in this smart group from now and evermore. So if I now kind of switch roles and look at myself being that field technician that I didn't want to give the ability to update the model to, if I need to move a student, for instance, let's say student A and student B, in fact, I'm going to edit these and just add that it's iOS to these inventory queries. Just 
just to make it a little cleaner for you. Okay, and then lastly, the staff one. So those are all done. Now, how is it different for a technician in the field? How is it different for you going forward with this? Well, now the restrictions are very clear. There's just automatically going to be a clone for a device in one of these three things. And it can't be in any two of them at the same time because that field can only have one value. So what does it take? What if I'm a field technician and I need to say, hey, this, is, this isn't a student device. This doesn't need student. It needs a staff profile. All that technician or all I need to do to fix that is to go in and edit the custom field value for this device and say that the restriction is no longer student, but it is staff. And then I can go ahead and save that. You'll notice also the user role is in here as student and I can switch that to staff as well. Now that custom field having staff in there means that I can then use that for any smart group. So if I want to define and set something to go to all staff in all locations, I don't have to then go ahead and assign content here and here and here. I can just do one smart group for staff, right? So with that change in that custom field, if we refresh groups now to do it on its own, if we give it some time to do it, but I'm going to tell it to refresh that, right? And automatically you see that now, Student A and student B are still in student normal, but all of a sudden staff has become populated and that device is over here. And what's different about this than what we talked about before is I no longer need to update the model. Simply changing that custom field and refreshing the smart group or letting the timeout happen and it moves on its own will automatically change the content that goes to that device, right? So if I look in faucet status for this device, Right, I'm going to see that the staff profile is assigned right, automatically without a model update. So that's the main difference there. As far as the other two examples I had in there for uh, doing, say, the staff one, I think that one's pretty clear cut. But you can also use this for individual app installs. So I could actually say something like this. Right, I could call it app installs for these kind of apps where you get, uh, you know, that actually cost money that only individuals get. We could do something like this, and in here we could do a new smart group, and we could say install Photoshop, for instance, as a smart group, and what's the criteria for that? Again, it's going to be an inventory query, this time based on our other field, which was install Adobe Photoshop, and we simply say true. Right. So by default, and then we, of course, would make an association here of our Photoshop faucet against this smart group. And again, the only thing we'd have to do to make devices show up in here. Now, of course, it's not really pertinent for an iPad, but let's go ahead and edit that custom field value. The only thing I have to do is say, boom, this is, should install Photoshop. Save that, and then automatically the groups will update, and that's going to push out. Right Now, I can again, I can force it to evaluate it right away if I want to. and we'll see that device pop in there. Right. So in a nutshell, using custom fields to drive smart groups has some distinct advantages over using the manual groups, primarily around not having to do model update. And if you don't have to have your field technicians doing model update, then you don't need to give them the rights to do model update. So a lot of wins there along the way. And yeah, we hope you found this helpful.